looking at you, kid. You're going to need a bigger potion. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. I'll have what she's having. Boss will be with you, always. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Inhale and exhale this moment, and thank God for the unique beauties and wonders of this day. We should take advantage of every moment we can to enjoy the simplicity of God's creation, whether it be clear skies and sun or clouded over with gloom. And hey, if the air is this clear right now, and it does rain tomorrow, I might even put jars and bins out and catch the rain. Throw that in the water filter and have water more alkaline and than any bottled brand out there. Chadwick Boseman. This is Gone with the Wind. Cue the music. Hey everybody, welcome to Gone with the Wind. Yes, we are still alive. There has just not been a lot of movie stuff to go on to really talk about. And COVID has really gotten a lot of us down, me included. But I decided let's go ahead and let us have a quick, even if it's an hour or less, discussion about films and just kind of see where the state of things are. As you heard me talk about at the very beginning. Oh yeah, by the way, this is Gone with the Wind, the show about award shows where we talk about, you guessed it, award shows. But less about award shows now, more kind of generally about movies because we're kind of fishing for anything <laughs> right now and seeing what's going to bite the bait. Uh, you can tell I'm from the South uh, using metaphors like that. Um, but as I was saying, that beginning thing was from Chadwick Boseman and it's one of the final texts he sent to his castmate, Josh Gad of the film Marshall and powerful films, a powerful man. We mourn his passing um, um, last week uh, when we found out on August 28th of his passing at the age of, um, Ooh, 43, I believe. Sounds a bit what? Okay, 43 is what I believe it to be the case. Uh, he was diagnosed with colon cancer stage 3 specifically in 2016 and still through all that until the last little bit when he progressed to stage 4, he was still filming mil all that time as Black Panther. He was doing Marshall. He was doing The Five Bloods. He was doing this multitude of films, including both Avengers final film, both final Avengers films. Uh, he was a force to be reckoned with, and we are deeply in his passing hurt, especially when it's from cancer. Cancer cancer sucks. And the fact that he lost that battle but continued to trudge on is something that inspires. Who Not only he was he an inspiration um, years before, he was still continued to be inspiration until his last breath. And Chadwick Boseman, we thank you for all that you did, not only for Hollywood, but for this world. Um, and thank you for the representation you were. Uh, by the way, we also here have Malcolm and Ryan. Uh, would you guys like to say anything regarding Chadwick Boseman and his passing and where you were when you heard the news? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, I've, I've said this on many things, um, uh, many shows before, but um, like, it's just one of the, it just came as a shock to me because like he kept this so secretive. Like no one knew he was sick um um and it's just one of those ones that like just hearing about it and um and my brother had actually told me that apparently his um doctor said a few weeks before this was apparently it came out that this doctor said that um you might actually beat beat this because apparently this is a colon cancer is a really hard one to beat um and um and the doctor said you might actually beat this and then yeah, but it's just just knowing that, like it, it's sad. But I mean, he over like he he's probably over his career played so many influential black people, whether it's Black Panther, whether it's Marshall, whether it is um, Jackie Robinson or James Brown. Like he's just going to be like immortalized. Mm -hmm. Ryan, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's you know, it, it's a very, very, very sad um, moment. I mean, he was a terrific actor um, and he's an actor whose career, you know, unfortunately it started too late and obviously ended too early. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah. And, you know, not to make it all about that side of things, but, you know, he, he was a person that we had many years yeah. of great art and great work to see that you know now unfortunately we're never going to be able to um and you know it, this is 
And this recalls back to a moment and a quote from another actor who was in this a sort of a, a similar situation um, when he Ledger passed away in 2008. Um, that was what it most clearly recalled to me, an actor who, you know, who had a career kind of, you know, hitting a peak moment. And, you know, obviously Chadwick Boseman similarly, I mean, Black Panther, you know, I know that's what everybody's going to associate him with forever. And, you know, there's a good reason for that. It's a terrific yeah. movie and it's terrific in the role. Um, you know, I really like 42 and hope more people can see that and Agreed. Um, revisit his career because I think that it's, you know, he's, he was really terrific and, you know, the world is worse for that loss. And, you know, it's amazing the work that he, that he undertook, um, you know, he found out pretty much right at the time that his career was really taking its turn yeah. in a positive way. And, um, you know, he spent a lot of time, you know, whether it was mentoring or uh, being supportive or being a form of um, visibility of a minority person for, for kids. And he did a oh lot of goodness, work with yes. kids and kids in hospitals and stuff. And, he, you know, he was, by all measures, seemingly a, a, a good person. And, um, you know, on top of being a good artist, it's, it's sad to lose someone like that. And that's not something you plan for. And that's why it's, all the more shocking and difficult to digest. Yeah. I mean, one thing will be interesting to see is um, with what the, the award season next year, if he's going to get like a nomination for the Five Bloods. Um... Mm -hmm. I mean, the wars next, wars next year are going to look very different and they're going to look very interesting regardless yeah. of what transpires. But um, just to know, to, to know that even at the age of, and it is 43, it is confirmed it. Um, mm -hmm. That is still so, so young. It's yep. still very, very young. And the fact that during that time he was, he, he was having multiple surgeries and he was going through chemotherapy during the work of all these different films. That's for those of you who've gone through chemotherapy or know someone who has gone through chemotherapy that is physically draining that is emotionally draining. And the fact that he still, he, he never publicly spoke about the diagnosis and he still no. manages to continue. And you couldn't, no one could really tell by any stretch of the imagination. I remember sometime a while he posted something on, I, I'm not sure if it's Twitter, Periscope, Instagram, what have you. And some people gave some really derogatory comments about his weight. And I was like appalled at that. We don't know what he, we don't know what someone is going through. And mm. to know that that's the case about what was transpiring. This man who has played Jackie Robinson, who has played Thurgood Marshall, who has even played T'Challa, uh, as we know him now, to know that he was going through that and still keeping a, such a strong spirit, a strong faith, a strong, like, just presence for what mm -hmm. he did for young black American boys specifically. I know how many people that I've seen uh, who have looked up to him, how many people that I know who have just you know, aspire to be, I mean, he came out of nowhere with 42. Like, I don't remember hearing about him at all. And they're like, Oh, this guy's someone to look out to. And then he got the role of black Panther. And now he just kind of took off. Like I knew that he was at his peak right now. This is, he was at his peak is what he was. And maybe he was getting to his peak. We will never know this. Cause it, cause this is where it stops abruptly. And it's, and it's, it, it's, 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 it's truly horrible. It's truly can cancer is a horrendous thing. And this is kind of shows someone who is so in the cultural spotlight to know that to give us a sobering message that life is precious is something I think that is very powerful. And uh, we'll have to see him finally in um, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom on Netflix. I'm not sure when it'll be come out. They film. They finished filming this year. Uh, a couple of uh, weeks before his passing, they've wrapped up that. So he, that'll be his last um, film, uh, his uh, uh, post uh, um, um, posthumous movie. Thank you. I keep thinking posthumous. That's what in the world. That's not it. Uh, that'll be his uh, uh, last film that we will see. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll look forward to that. Um, but yeah, anything, um, anything else you guys want to add? Um. I mean, the only last thing is, yeah, like, is um, just one of the sort of 
but photos has been shared around Twitter and stuff, like to really show the impact that he had was um was this picture of a kid who uh put had all their um Avengers toys in a circle with yeah. um the fallen Black Panther in the center, just as a tribute. It's like um and I think there's a whole series of that of that same sort of kid, but uh, there's also one of them having a funeral um, at one stage. It's just it just shows sort of how much uh, Black uh, like Chadwick meant to many people. Yeah, no, it's yeah his 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 death like hit. I I remember I found out about an hour, or so it just hit like a knife. Did to know that because it feels so sudden. Um, but yeah, uh, wanted to begin that and let that out of the way. And our thoughts and prayers uh, are currently with uh, the Bozeman family, his wife, um, yeah, uh, at this time, and uh, his family. Um, but we're going to be moving on right now. Uh, and in the spirit of uh, Chadwick Bozeman, continue on with, um, uh, you know, power and vigor. Um, thank you, Chadwick Bozeman. Uh, for all that you did for the community in the short time, and the Hollywood and the um, just the community of the world in the short time that you were here. Uh, but we're going to move on right now, and we're going to quickly, because we've been gone a while, there are certain things that we may or may not have seen. Uh, and I know that Malcolm is on limited time right now before he has to go jump onto rank him. So, Malcolm, you are the only one of us who has seen Tenet. So would you give us a quick, spoiler-free review of your thoughts on Tenet? Because for those of you who are unaware, Tenet has released. I know it seems very weird to think about it, but it has been released in this COVID-19 pandemic. So what did you think of the movie Tenet when you saw it in glorious screens and not, you know, before it goes to VOD and I have to watch it on my phone? Sorry, Christopher Nolan. <laughs> um, I know, I hate it, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, my thoughts on Tenet will be really short because there's really a lot going on that it's just so spoilery. It's so hard to do a non-spoiler review, but um, but understandable. But it's just it's one of those ones that I think it's it's fine. I mean, it's not as it's not as best movie, but it's definitely not as worst. Um, it's just an okay movie. Like the acting across the board is great. The sound mixing is really questionable. Um, like a lot of the times. The music is so loud that you can barely oh, un- no. hear what the actors are saying. Just interstellar, um, and it's it's just one of those ones that is really hard to understand for how that happened like that. Um, but yeah, it. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to try. And, I'm not going to say anything to the, about the plot because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything. <laughs> Respectable. Is there any like w- any highlights in the acting? Any highlights in like the cinematography? Um, anything that you enjoyed from that sense? I mean, the cinematography itself look um was beautiful. Like it, it was a really good. It was a good looking movie. Um, of oh, that aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and Robert Pattinson and John David Washington, I think, had a great um sort of um camaraderie. I don't know if that's the word. Repertoire, but, uh, back and repertoire forth. Is probably the word, repertoire is probably the one I'm thinking of. And Kenneth Bradle is great is, um, in it as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that's all we're going to be getting out of him because apparently it's a very secretive film. Um, and I probably may not be able to see it um, until, you know, <laughs> it comes on uh, Blu-ray or DVD or what have you, because it doesn't look like we're going to be uh, having movie theaters open where I am anytime soon, and I'm not going to travel to a different state because the states around me also have the same thing. Hooray the South of America! Hooray, hooray the South of the United States of America! Keep doing what you're doing. Just kidding. Don't. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, there's also another, any, well, I know Ryan, you haven't seen Tintinet yet. Anything yet is the keyword. Anything you're looking forward to the most and will you be seeing it in theaters? Um, working on it. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most about it? What am I looking forward to most for Tenet? Um, uh, you know, like I saw the IMAX preview back in, when I saw the Rise of Skywalker, when 
Oh yeah, that, that was a that movie. Was, that was the best part of that movie, but um, mm, yeah, I, I'm I'm just interested to see how this goes. You know, I've heard a little bit more about the plot now. Um, I've had some friends see this movie, um, like some coworkers and stuff, and and so I've heard little bits and pieces, and I'm just curious to see how it all plays out. Um, I think Nolan is one of my favorite working directors, and. Mm-hmm. I feel pretty comfortable saying that given his filmography, but um, yeah, so you know, it doesn't sound it doesn't necessarily sound like Tenet is going to be the breakthrough Yeah, I had once thought, but I'm curious because I have not, I have yet to see a Nolan movie that I do not like on film level. Yeah, and maybe it's just the condition of the world that we are at right now, but I feel it feels weird. Like I feel like it came out of nowhere, the movie. Like we were <laughs> hyped it up and they pushed it back and then we kind of all forgot about it until the week it released. Well, it's My, a little weird. Yeah. That, like there's so few theaters open. Yes. Um like I mean, where I am, like everything is open, so it's a little bit I have a little bit less of an excuse. But yeah. <laughs> um you know, you look at across North America, and particularly in the U.S., where everything, for one reason or another, some rightly and some wrongly, places are still, like, pretty heartily locked down. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know, it just strikes me that it was a weird choice, but I guess if you're going to have other theaters open, you might as well start. I, I don't know. I, I'm just a little, I'm a little surprised that they released it the way they did. Mm-hmm. I guess is the way that I would phrase this. That's also my my thing. I mean, uh, of course, we're in very interesting and very um, we're in very unique times. So I understand their urgency to get it out before it's forgotten. But I feel like they could have maximized it further if they just pushed it back just a little bit more. Because so many other films have been pushed back to next year. They had time to do so. Um, <sighs> And they weren't going to put it on VOD because I know that Nolan would never have had that if he had any say in it. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, it's probably a case of Warner Brothers looking at this schedule for next year is like, and maybe not seeing um, somewhere to realistically put True, it where, yeah. it's not, where it's not going to be drowned out for by anything else. So it's like, so mm-hmm. it's probably a case of we need to get this out, um, and. Is it, like, um, it, it's probably a case of uh, because as it is, um, if you look at the release schedule for the rest of September, there's no other really big movies coming out. So, yeah. with that being yeah. said, um, it could do really well box office because of that. Uh, because there's nothing else in there until one of eighty four, which is once again Warner Brothers. <laughs> um, then, that is true. Then you've got a whole weekend where you can uh, rack up uh, much money and have, have a chance of um, doing something because all the other studios have moved their movies away. So that's true. Which brings me to the thing: is this the is it? So you're saying September is the time for Tenant and New Mutants to to rake rank in that dough? I mean, you. I mean, New Mutants is interesting to see how that's going to go because it it depends on how mm-hmm. if it's if it's going to have a drop if it's going to sort of stay because um like um because box office wise like tenant has already made 53 million dollars um worldwide there was a report that i saw today that said that, that it may have made gone up to 100 million at the moment but um but last weekend like new mutants was number one at the box office and made seven million dollars so whether it holds Mm. seven million this week or if um or if it drops because of tenant because um like i was watching um charts with dan on dan's dan Mm. mill's channel um and he he kind of did a breakdown of movie theaters that have tenant playing and apparently like even at its the limited capacity that each cinema has, it's almost sold out of tenant. So he's predicting that tenant could at least, could actually do maybe about twenty million dollars domestically this week for the opening weekend. So 
That's still really good. That's still very yeah. good, considering where we are at right now. And and I think people are just itching to go back into the film, into the films, into the movies. And I know I'm getting itching to go back into a theater to actually sit down and watch. I'm not itching to get COVID, obviously, but I'm itching to have that sort of, you know, atmosphere back into my life. But I don't know when it is going to be. But also, I want to say you don't know uh malcolm uh, what the drop-off would be well right now the friday box office or new mutants by the forbes says it has plunged 74 percent so ouch yeah but the, but then again um i think the reviews are not helping it either <laughs> nope. for more of for more of read about it's not it's not a good movie i have not I heard mean, at, at least we know it exists it has, yes it's actually a thing are we sure you have either have seen it have any of us seen it though? I mean, I haven't seen it, but I know people who have. So unless they lie to me, did it's I'm a gonna, mass conspiracy? Uh, take... <laughs> it's people you know seen or may not. And I know you have to jump off in a second, Malcolm. So uh, I want to quickly say, um, uh, uh, talk about trailers that we have been uh, looking into or that we have heard about these past few weeks. And there's a, there's a trailer for you specifically that you that were that you recently saw that you wanted to highlight. And what is that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, for like it's the only really sort of big trailer that for a movie that's potentially still coming out this year. That's no, um, no time to die. Um, like it was released sort of last week, and um, mm -hmm. and it's just and it's um, one of those, and it looks really good. Um, I mean, a lot of people are still saying it. They think that it's going to be a. Uh, their own version of Doctor No. I still am not, am not convinced that it's going to be a retelling of Doctor No, so to speak. But I mean, it's one of those ones like no one knew Christoph Waltz was going to be Blofeld until it was revealed in the movie. So who that could easily be this uh, this that whole thing again? But like know. maybe Mal Malik looks good as a villain. It's just um, and I just don't think that these trailers still told too much. So. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm excited. I, I have still yet to finish as I we tried earlier this year. I tried to have my watch through of all the James Bond movies. I did not finish. I got somewhere. Uh, I finished Connery. I d got somewhere after the first Roger Moore and I paused uh, because they were not free. And I decided, mm, do I want to buy, buy this? No, but I'm still super excited because I watched all the Craig, watched the Connery, watched the Brosnan. I'm I am all on board for this one and to see how Craig goes out. Uh, Ryan, what about you? Yeah, no, um, I actually did watch this trailer, and it was, it, it's intriguing, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that it looks better than Spectre, yes, and better than Quantum of Solace, but it's not playing the same game as the other two, mm -hmm. so... I, I don't I don't know if that's too unreasonable of an artist that probably is, but like I don't know. I I'm I'm curious. I'll, I'll I'm definitely gonna go see it. Um, my coworker and I are actually doing a Daniel Craig Bond marathon on. Nice, so nice. It's gonna be our Labor Day. Um, <laughs> nice. So um, yeah, no, I'm I'm curious, but um, you know, cautious. Understandably cautious. I get that. Um, and I know for me, as I said, I'm excited to see it. I can't wait. I don't know when does it come out again. I totally forgot. <laughs> I'm blanking. No, uh, November twenty uh, fifth. I think it should. We should be better by then, right? Knock on wood. He knocks on wood very vigorously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's. I'm not. I'm not hopeful, but I, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm hopeful, but I'm not holding my breath. Is what I'm saying. Uh, November twentieth is when it's slated for the states. Okay, no, it's slated for November twelfth in UK. I understand that is. I get that. I understand that completely. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, if things are not better, like if things are not open by then in most places, I don't know. Either something went terribly wrong in the next two months, or people are crazy. Both of which are possible, but <laughs> both are very po both at the same time possibly. <laughs> it's possible both will happen, or maybe I mean, you know, the election will cause some sort of massive coup and things will go absolutely. <laughs> oh, <no! laughs> 
The last thing I want is for we we are we're already having a pandemic, guys. The last thing we need is civil unrest. We're already having part of that. You here. already have. Not saying it's not some of that. It's not un, like to a larger degree. Let me un, let me rephrase that to a larger degree. And I'm not saying some of that is not justified. I'm saying this we don't need more than we already have. I think you could do with less. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, hey, we're so far where I'm in Greensboro. We are okay. We're totally fine here in Greensboro. Well, that's nice for you. It is I nice was talking to my friend who lives in another U.S. city, and it's bananas. Oh, <laughs> he lives I'm in so Park. sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I was like, uh... <laughs> "Hope he is okay." We totally fine here now. <laughs> yeah, how are you? How are you? It's like uh, everything's fine. Uh, I totally forgot the quote now. How are you? It's like <laughs> um, Actually, another one of my colleagues had kind of a hilarious quote. Not a hilarious quote because it's really depressing. But oh, like, geez. welcome to the situation he's... we're in now. Everything's depressing. And, well, I mean, his comment was that he's witnessing the fall of Rome in reference. To the United States, and he's like, I that's kind of very. Like he's like, I kind of like Rome. I live next to Rome. I would like it if Rome was better. You know what? I'm sure lots of people felt that same way. Well, and I was like, but anyway, you know, on that note, on that note I'm hitting off. Okay, I thought so. Anyway, note. see you, Malcolm. Bye, Malcolm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, let, let us hope and pray Rome does not fall. I think that's very bleak of him to say. <laughs> I and I I don't believe it at this at this juncture. I do not believe this is the fall of Rome because if it was, we would be in deep trouble, um, deep trouble. Uh, but uh, that 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 said, um, uh, we what have other trailers that you watch. What other trailers that I watched? Uh, one of the ones that I saw recently that I totally didn't think they were going to have a trailer for. Uh, that is uh, the Batman um, from okay. um, Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson. I had no idea what to expect. I totally forgot that the DC dro- Dome thing or whatever it was called specifically, uh, Fandom. Oh, maybe yeah. that's what it was. Uh, I forgot that happened, and instead, uh, I was surprised when that dropped. And I looked at it, and I was on board. This feels very Prisoners Zodiac type of thing, if that makes any sense. Like Seven, I believe that was her Fincher with some uh, Villeneuve um, uh, put into there. And I think that Reeves has his sense of style, and I'm enjoying that. It doesn't feel as bro- as vast. It has this intimate darkness to it that I appreciate. And I'm on board, because I haven't seen the Riddler yet. I would appreciate it if the Riddler actually, I don't know, had his cane and staff and was kind of a little more over the top, but no, I guess we're going to have Paul Dano doing his whatever that is he's doing. I'm on board though. I'm excited to see. Also, to- I, I'm I am loving the few images of Colin Farrell as the penguin that we have seen in the trailer. That's just great makeup. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I dug this trailer. I'm sad that this movie's going to be delayed even more. Oh, yeah. Robert Pattinson getting COVID. I know. <laughs> wow. I was like, first it's Dwayne the Rock Johnson, now Robert Pattinson, sir. What did you do? Like they'll all be fine. It's okay. Calm down, audience. <laughs> but like, oh, no, it'll be fine. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just annoying because you're just like, okay, guys, what are we doing here? Like, how did you? Awesome, but Robert, I saw somebody post online. He's like. Oh, it's like we shouldn't be having major productions right now. Well, that's not the problem. I was about to say the problem probably you know he probably didn't get it filming. I mean unlikely. And if they really like, you know, and honestly, I think that they could probably improve their production schedules if they bubbled up like and actually I think yeah. the more the more I look at the the NHL is a really great example of doing yes. something successfully um i think maybe it's like you could make the argument that what they're doing is overkill but the reality is that they've run the nhl playoffs really pretty seamlessly they've had mm-hmm. exactly zero cases of covid and that's pretty seamlessly you know it's overall it's been a, a vast success like my city his host is one of the two host cities right so mm-hmm. You know, we, I drive through the bubble a lot because it's downtown. And, you know, it's really impressive the work that they did. And you think that, like, 
you know, and they're putting out a product. I I don't know what the numbers have been, but I, you got to imagine that it's been well viewed. Um, yeah, it's certainly been well viewed here. I can tell you that, but I don't know how the U.S. audiences are responding to hockey. You but... are talking to the wrong guy who doesn't really <laughs> watch sports. Uh, you well, are talking to the enough. wrong guy. I um, will say though, I have heard nothing but great things, including I believe NBA also is doing the bubble too. Correct. Yes, they, they've bubbled up, but they, I believe, are doing it all in one location instead of two. Yes. Um, the yeah, NHL sure. split between Edmonton and Toronto, whereas they're all in Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> what a location. <laughs> Which I think, honestly, that's a smart thing, because you know that, I believe, in the UK, Jurassic, Jurassic, uh, Jurassic World Fallen Order is currently filming, and they haven't had any cases, to our knowledge, that they have released publicly. I don't know if they are legally allowed. Yeah. I know some places are supposed to. Some places need to, some places don't. But you look over what they did with that uh, short film that um, uh, uh, John David Washington and uh, Zendaya did, um, mm -hmm. which they did taking those precautions, and they created a whole film during quarantine. I think it's incredibly yeah. possible if you if you take the necessary steps for protection and take your craft seriously enough to not try to go out your, your way um, – by bubbling up and creating this movie, not only probably can you get the movie done possibly faster, you can also mm -hmm. protect yourself and those around you. Because the last thing we need is someone to get it, be asymptomatic, and then someone else who works there gets it, goes home and gives it to their ailing brother or something. That's the last yeah. thing that we need to do. That's the thing that we're most concerned about. And hopefully people who have came in contact with Pattinson are quarantining responsibly. Mm. Um, yeah. And I guess all that, I mean, that was a really long diversion to say for a $200 million movie. You, oh, yeah. You could, do, you could create a bubble for the people. You can. Like, you can create an editor's, you, you can even create different kinds of bubbles. You could have a VFX bubble, an editor's yeah. bubble, a like on set bubble. Like, you don't even need to bubble these people together. You don't. <laughs> but, like, you know, just make it work, right? <laughs> like, I, I, there are many ways to I th honestly think there are many ways to make it work um th they I just think I, I don't know I don't know what they were doing for the Batman or what's the necessary precautions that they were taking and I know they're gonna have to push it back because of this but yeah. from everything that I've heard so far from other productions that are currently either on hold or whatnot there there are ways to safely go back and do do things be you're working from home because some things I know, Bubbling is a great idea. Like even for my work, I'm not allowed to go back in the station because they've bubbled certain people. Um, like this is literally the only people who are allowed to go into the station. You know, they've yeah. made that a kind of particular bubble of some kind. Mm. Um, I think that's a that's a positive thing to do. But anyway, yeah, the Batman. <laughs> I like the trailer. So um, trailer any trailer? Cool. Trailer is very very cool. What about you? Any, any trailer that, that jumped out at you, Ryan? Uh, well, I was going to bring up the Batman, but you preempted that Whoops. one. Um, <laughs> the only other trailer that I've seen other than those two, well, I guess I saw that weird Suicide Squad thing, but I'm not going to talk about eh, that because that's fine. it was it was weird. Um, I did watch the Wonder Woman 84 trailer, which mm. it, yeah, it yeah, looks sure. fine. It looks whatever. Like it's a movie that's gonna come out. That's my my enthusiasm <laughs> for that has dropped. <laughs> like I am I am so excited. I, I I excuse me, I am I was so excited for the first for, for when it first announced because I love the first movie, but my enthusiasm has dropped and I think it might just be for COVID, but oh well. Go on, sir. Yeah, no, I just think that like they've taken I don't know, the first movie left you with like a really interesting kind of Thing to follow up on yeah and they aren't doing that and they're doing something uh, else and i don't know it just i don't know what they're doing it just it looks odd it just doesn't look quite as well formed i, I i'm <laughs> i'm i am genuinely curious um and how that's going to turn out because i am not i, I it seems it seems it's it's an, it's an it's an interesting choice to bring back Trevor. That's one of the thing I'm I'm the most concerned about because I don't know why. Spoiler alert, guys! He had a great way that he went out in Wonder Woman, and I don't know why they're bringing this back or whatnot. Time travel, possibly. 
Chris Pye is a marketable actor. He is a marketable <laughs> actor. But you think that, I don't know, that Gal Gadot would be a marketable actress by now because of, well, she is. I don't know, the first but Wonder Woman doing gangbuster numbers. But oh well. They still need a person. <laughs> they still need another person. They do need a, they need, they need a person. <laughs> That's true. Gal like, Gadot um, can only do so much, right? True. Any, okay. Any other any other trailers to your knowledge? I definitely haven't seen any. And like I said, I neither know, have I. Norm, even though normally my excuse is I see them in theaters, now I don't have that excuse. I just don't. I can continue to not watch trailers. Because, Same. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I don't know. Well, we'll see. Um. Are you, uh, so I, I know that we have a little bit of a pre-roll discussion about this. Um, what's your oh, yes, on, I was going to bring this up next. On the Mulan thing. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate the fact that Disney Plus already is very affordable. It is a lot lower be- mm-hmm. than other stuff because mostly probably because they already own those. Uh, they are, they're not, they don't, they're not, like, they're not like Netflix or Prime where, you know, they have to uh, pay a fee to the people to distribute their films or to stream them. Disney owns these. They can literally just put them on there and they just make all that excess money just because they can. I do not appreciate the fact that they have already pushed back Mulan. I understand. I do not appreciate the fact that they decided to drop Mulan as a VOD, something that looked visually gorgeous and I was excited about until I started to read some of the reviews and got very disappointed. And then I found out that they mm -hmm, are charging in America, in the U.S. of A., they are charging $30 to access it. It's like a premium Disney Plus. It's not Mm -hmm. even like, you know, on Disney Plus. You have to access a, a, it's like behind a super secret firewall or something. You have to pay $30 for that. I am not, a. I do not care for that fact. That you have to pay extra money to access this movie. And of course you get it forever. But Malcolm, I believe, pointed out to us before he left. I know he wasn't a fan of this either. And he's not going to buy it or rent it or what have you. They're releasing it in December for free. On Disney+. Plus. So I, I, I don't... I, I'm, I'm confused by the fact of why would they say that to the case. Or why would, why would they even just let us have it? Like, take the, take the L, Disney, on the, the pandemic that is transpiring. Or take Mulan and push it to next year because you don't have any other Disney movie besides like what Pinocchio currently in the works right now, live action remakes. But anyway, what is your opinion on that? I, for one, do not care for the fact that they did this. It seems unnecessary, at least for that price tag. Well, yeah, I mean, my, like, I don't necessarily have the issue with them doing this. Like, for example, and they did the basically the same thing with Onward when it came out whatever that was, like right at the beginning of this pandemic. Right, right at the beginning in March. in March. Um, and they released it to buy on iTunes because they didn't do it on Disney Plus right away because they yeah. didn't have this Disney Plus premier access thing, which is new to move on. But yes, I'm it sure is. If they, I'm sure if they had thought about it, they would have done it for um, Onward as well, you think? Oh, yeah. That's probably how they're going to do this in the future on a go-forward basis. Um and at the time, for 20 bucks, I bought Onward. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. I want to see this movie. At the time, I really needed some happiness. I really enjoyed it. It was a good investment. Yeah. Um, and I would have paid 20 bucks for a movie ticket anyway. So it's basically the same, the same difference. Um, so it's not that I have a problem with that necessarily. But <laughs> instead of being 20 bucks, which I think is a, which I think is a fair price, even then, I mean, I think, okay, like, maybe that's a little bit more than I would spend on movie tickets, but whatever. Yeah. It's fair. Theoretically, I could have everybody over, and we could all watch one thing. Yeah. In Canada, I mean, I know in the U.S., I know this is totally currency-based, but it's $35. Yeah. <laughs> to get Mulan here in Canada. And I, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's, we're starting, we're starting to push my boundary there. At some point, like it's not that I can't afford thirty five dollars. That's not the point. The point yeah. is that, like, I don't it's want principle. to spend thirty five dollars to access something for two bonus months. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the problem I have with two because I'm not paying thirty. I rarely will pay thirty five dollars in itself for a film. 
Like I wait for it to go a little lower before I drop money like that on an actual di- a whole on a physical copy that I can keep forever. Like that's a that's Criterion collection price there. Exactly. <laughs> like Disney, what are you doing? <laughs> and like, I don't know. It's. I also love how the ads like you could stream in 4K. I was like, well, yes, I guess if your internet is good enough, you could do that. But <laughs> I mean, there's there are other factors related to that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, most people cannot do that. But whatever, <laughs> we'll move on, Disney. <laughs> and, Bold move, like, Disney. Bold move. I, like, I don't know. It just it strikes me that like I see what they're trying to do, but I don't know that they achieved the goal. No, like. I don't know that this is necessary. Like, maybe this is not a long-term plan. I don't know what this is. Maybe. <laughs> this is just a... And I'm surprised they aren't releasing it in places where theaters are open. Yeah, that's what I'm curious. If Tenet could do it, I don't know why they decided to do this. Like, maybe uh, they're, maybe this is Disney making a corporate statement. Like, we take COVID seriously. So these places that are open are being awful, horrible places. Like, maybe that's the statement that Disney's trying to make. Maybe. But, uh, but that's, I don't know. I feel like that's being generous. That's being very generous to their probably, who they're, they're like, we like, they're like, you know, everyone knows Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob. He's like, mm-hmm. hello, I like money. I feel like that's Disney, you know, whenever they're trying to uh, 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 find a way to capitalize on our, our, they're already getting our dollar for almost everything else, which I I'll admit, I'll give him my dollar for some things, but this is probably where I'm going to draw the line when it comes to things like these. I'm curious Actually, how much money they're going to make from this, though. Agreed. Like, I'm, I'm curious to see I'm, the internals. That's what I'm curious about. I am more than willing to wait to December, and I'm just going to be patient wait to December, because you know what? I have yet to see Dumbo, and it's on Disney+. Plus, and Because I've lost all... I have literally <laughs> lost almost all my enthusiasm that I had to see live action Disney remakes. I'm just like, please guys, no more. Just 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 yeah. stop. Just stop. I mean if there was anyone that I was gonna pay for, it's this one. Um Yeah. And look, it's not that I'm not thinking about it. I really am. Like it's possible at some time in the next few months I will break down and be like, I just need to watch something. Fine Mulan. <laughs> like that's the way this is gonna go. If, fine. Uh, fine, I guess it will be Mulan. Um but Come on, Ryan. Don't be weak. You can do this. Stay strong. We will see. Stick we'll it see to the, the man. Stick it to the mouse. Um, the mouse. I don't think the mouse to... gives one has one word of thought. For I, I don't know. And see, the thing is, like, I was watching Disney Plus this morning. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I watched. No. I rewatch episode one of The Mandalorian. Oh yeah, because that's gonna be coming out. And hey, by that October. time, that 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 will come out in October for you um, to watch instead. So that that it will is, keep you and satisfy you. That'll ease you through into December until this comes out for free. And by that time, if it's yeah. November something, you can like I can wait a little bit longer. Oh wait, no, they release. Oh god, I forgot the Mandalorian releases weekly though, doesn't it? Oh no, no. I forgot about that. <laughs> I don't want that again. I can't binge it. <laughs> Curses. Damn it. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Anyways. Uh, anyway, so yeah, those are the trailers that we saw, and I totally, completely forgot what else that we were going to look, talk about. Uh, oh, yeah, this is kind of like very small, but um, I wanted to talk about the Empire had some, pr- their preview of their next issue, and they had some delicious photo shoots uh, with the cast of Dune. Have you seen that yet, Ryan? I have. I, listen, I have never seen Dune, the original Dune. I have never read the book Dune. All I know is that I love Denis Villeneuve, and I absolutely adore the cast he's got going on, and everything about this film when it comes to the filmmaking process. I am just excited, and I am just... Yes! (laughs) Yes, please, give me this now! Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm definitely curious. Um, I have seen the original Dune, Ooh. And I once upon a time read most of the book. I have the book somewhere, and I'm meaning to reread it before this movie comes out. But um, I don't know where it is, because my life is still in boxes. Um, and has been for a few years now. Understandable. So, <laughs> uh, eventually I will find it, and I will reread it, because I remember... And I know, like, obviously this is one of the better science fiction books, or it's considered one of the better science fiction books, and um 
you know, these stills look interesting. Um, I'm curious. This is kind of like, I mean, obviously, the, sh the original Dune was springing off argument for David Lynch directing a Star Wars movie, which he never did. But um, was it? Huh. Yeah. Well, it's in the sort of the same time period. Actually, I forget which came first. Um, because he was supposed to direct Return of the Jedi for a brief period of time. Um, oh, but the more you know, which would have been very weird. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Um, moving right along. Um, yeah, no, I think that uh, seeing Denis Villeneuve um, explore this world and explore that kind of high fantasy science fiction um, looks interesting. Uh, oh and, yeah. You know, he's got several extremely talented actors in this movie. Um, oh, the riches. So, um, yeah, no, definitely just, just excited and curious to see what he does because much like Nolan of late, Denis Villeneuve has, you know, unlike Nolan, he has movies they don't like, but it's been a while since he's made a bad one. So, it's been a very long time since he's made a bad one. It's so. been quite a while since he's made a bad movie um he's, he's really on a streak here <laughs> i mean listen last movie was 2049 right yes that would be his last movie and every time that remember when he came out of nowhere at least i remember was prisoners was the movie that i remember hearing about him for the first time where he actually became you know something a little more than just the guy who did oh, what was that first one in cindy's uh in Sandy. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Um I can pronounce words. <laughs> so he <It's> actually <laughs> There we go. That's why I couldn't I had trouble. I, I remember in my head I'm like, is it in Cindy's and what in Sandy's? Um so I am more than I am excited to see what because this is a guy who just I feel like he just keeps one upping himself with with scale and scope. Um and this is one that I'm looking Definitely forward to. And maybe so. when when it comes to this movie do and this is probably be the, obviously the biggest scale wise and i'm excited to see how he manages to bring that to screen because i love his visual eye his visual eye is fantastic and i yeah. think that it is with that cast we're in for a treat of some kind because as the as the empire magazine says spi spaceship spices sandworms on set of the sci-fi event of the year so they call it the sci-fi event of the year, and I'm one to inclined to agree because I don't think there's any other sci-fi movie of this caliber coming out at all. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, pretty much. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm looking, scrolling through his filmography again just to like remind myself. Yeah, I mean, really, since 2013, he hasn't made a bad movie. Blade Runner, Arrival, Sicario, Enemy, and Prisoners all in a row. That's, you know. So good. So good. That is, that is, you're not worthy. That is a good run. To put it lightly. <laughs> that, is a, that, so, that is, I that is might be one of my his favorite third, his uh, third, runs. His, his third consecutive sci-fi movie, though. Which I, it's kind of. You're crazy. right. Which, well, I guess he yeah, had three consecutive thriller films. Three consecutive thriller films. You have well, I guess Sicario is less of a thriller. Do you consider? Oh, okay. What do yeah, you consider guess... Sicario? No, yeah, you could call Sicario a thriller, I guess. I mean, I yeah, think action Sicario thriller, an action film, but sure. <laughs> um, no, it, it says uh, as action slash thriller. It says on its um. Okay, um so I guess yeah, Prisoners, Enemy, and Sicario. Yeah, that's right. That would that would be a pretty much a thriller run. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So yeah. he, so this is the last one for this one. But apparently, he's also—I didn't realize this—he uh, is currently attached to direct Cleopatra. I yeah, Wait, I knew that. How did I miss this? What is this? <laughs> Can you explain to me what is uh, this? No, is he, re is he remaking Cleopatra? Cleopatra? Is he remaking yeah. the? Is this the, is this the remake of the one with, you know, uh, Elizabeth Taylor? I think, well, I think it's a biopic about Cleopatra, like the person. 
the real yes. person well, that existed. Yes. I meant like this because <laughs> the first thing when I clicked this birth movies death article is a picture of 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 super white Elizabeth Taylor just right here in her Egyptian getup. And I'm over here questioning like, ah, so is this a are they referencing this of any kind or I'm confused. I'm just interesting because I haven't heard about this until right now. I couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's interesting that um, Denis Villeneuve is taking this like really, like, because he like I mean we can call that a thriller run, but like really from Polytechnique through um, Sicario, they're all very hard edged movies about real life. <laughs> um, yep. And now he's just like, mm, real life can go away. <laughs> We're going to go into this, like, this world of strange language speaking aliens. Yeah, very not. Robots. And now Crushing. just strange galaxies real life. and empires Oof. and crazy things. So. I mean, that's good. Good for you, sir, for completely. Um... For escaping this, escaping for, for, the world. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that. Um, I can't wait to see exactly <laughs> how that's going to play out. Um, because <laughs> he has he has another genre up his sleeve. If if he's if he's going with Cleopatra, he's going to go with period pieces now. I guess just do the biopics. <laughs> all right. I mean, I am all. Hey, listen. An actually granted Villeneuve, uh, Villeneuve uh, biopic of some kind. I'm here for it. Why not? That sounds interesting. Look, I'm here for whatever he wants to do. It's fine. Agreed. <laughs> like, but yeah, I'm so, all for it. The pictures look good, though. Pictures do look really good, and it make me excited. I just want to talk about that because I'm excited for Dune, and I'm excited that Denny does. Um, is there anything else, Ryan, that I have not uh, said that you would like to mention? Um, not that immediately comes to mind. I'm kind of like, is there any more any more movie news whatsoever that we have missed? That I know I'm missing probably something big. I mean, you had in your agenda that we were going to talk about New Mutants coming out, but I, I oh think yeah. I think that we can probably spare them. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. You're out. Congratulations. 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 You congratulations. made it. Everybody's already forgot about you. <laughs> yes. Give it uh, another week or so. And it's gone. Um, any, um, just give me one last sec. Going to figure out what I can. I walked um, down the fire this morning. <laughs> uh huh. Very nice. Very nice. It was on TV for some reason. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Well, I think that's it, guys. Um, <laughs> wow. Huh. Thank you guys for listening. I'm just, it's, <laughs> see, that's the problem. There's just not a lot to really... Um, in with a burst out with a sputter. <laughs> yeah, there any see any of the burst out with a sputter. We just there's not much really to go on yet until we actually get some more news down the pipe. But until then, thank you guys for listening to this episode of Gone with the Wind. Ryan, where can they find you? Um, I guess you can follow me if you want online at R McKenna nineteen. Fantastic, and you can also find me. Um, Manning at Twitter, uh, Cine underscore man, that's C-I-N-E underscore M-A-N-N, as well as well as my YouTube channel, Manning Franks, exactly like my name is spelt. Super original and super clever. <laughs> uh, and again, find us right here in uh, Gone with the Wind on uh, iTunes, Spotify, wherever you can find your favorite uh, uh, podcast format. See, I'm rusty. I haven't done this in so long. It's just because COVID kind of threw us all for a loop now, and now we don't have a lot of news. Remember when Parasite won Best Picture? Oh, wow. Remember? It was Remember? Like six months ago. <laughs> six months. It feels like an eternity ago, if I'm going to be real. Um, like a whole lifetime I can't ago. It's already September. That's the thing that's I know. Like really throwing me for a loop. Kids went back See, to school this week here. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Everything I'm, is weird. Uh, I'm really feeling it's really weird right now. Like, I feel like both time has slowed down and sped up at the same time. If, like, 
Yeah. I don't know. I don't well, know. It slowed down for a while, and then the month disappeared. I don't know. August just disappeared for you. March and April were so long. Even yeah, May that's when it all began. But like June through August was just gone. I don't know what happened to those three months. Listen, I'm still I'm still working from home, and I'm dying to get back into my <laughs> actual work to actually have that separation between. Huh, the separation between church and state. No, I'm actually excited to have that <laughs> separation between work and home. Uh, I don't know when it's going to happen, but hopefully it'll happen soon. But in the meantime, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you on the next episode of Gone with the Wind, when we actually have some more movie news, knock on wood, knock, 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 to actually talk about. In the meantime, thank you all, and thank you, Chadwick Boseman. <laughs>